Um, yes? Is it true plus or minus one? Ah, you are thinking. Very, very good. Yes, I left that off intentionally to make sure that you guys remember and to emphasize, to drive home the point that all complex numbers come from taking the square root of a negative number. It's plus or minus. You, have, you cannot have a complex number without its conjugate when you're talking about zeros. The same thing with irrational numbers. If square root of 3 is a, is a 0, negative square root of 3 has to always be a 0. right? If it's 5 minus square root of 2, you also have to have 5 plus square root of 2. So my other 0 is 2 plus i. Please be careful for the test leaving an i out in, in intentionally. You have to have the conjugate, the plus and the minus, taking the square root, introducing the square root, plus or minus. It's very, very important for you guys to understand. Because if you don't do that, complex numbers sometimes can be very, very confusing. You have to understand there's that conjugate. All right. So x um, equals negative 3, x equals 4 x equals 2 minus i, x equals 2 plus i. Then, this is what I did before, right? I did a problem like this. Now, you're just going to set them all equal to 0. So without showing my work here, I'll just do that. Here, it's going to be x um, minus 2 plus i equals 0. x minus 2 minus i equals 0. I'm just setting them all equal to 0. Are we cool with that? Just set them up. Therefore, then I have. If I was going to factor that out, I'd have 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 2i times x minus 2 minus i. Now, in reality, though, we're, if we had that in a factored form, we would set them all equal to 0, we would solve for x, and then we'd have our solutions at, right? But we're not actually trying to set it equal to 0. We're actually trying to set it equal to a polynomial. So. Please remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing a problem like this, this is just like, oops, that's plus i, right? Please remember, when you're doing a problem like this, you can, I always like to do the i's first, because what the i's produce is a difference of two squares. If you guys do not remember the difference of two squares, if you have any e expression where you have the first term is squared minus the second term is squared, that can be factored into a minus b times a plus b. That's the difference of two squares, the factored form. So what I want you guys to understand is, do you see x minus 2 is the same for both of those? Do you see that i is the same for both of those? So it's really like a plus b, a minus b, where a is represented by x minus 2, and b is being represented by i. Do you guys see that? So basically, all I'm simply doing is if I have a minus b times a plus b, I can expand that, or I can uh, multiply it out to give me a squared minus b squared. Right? So I'll do that later. So therefore, what I have here is x minus 2 squared minus i squared. OK? The next thing we have to remember about doing these is x is x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times x minus 2, right? Then you have to apply FOIL. Do not give me x plus x squared plus 4. This is x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4, x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4. Okay, You have to know how to square binomials. Then the other thing we didn't talk about was i squared. Does anybody remember i squared? Yeah, you remember it? i squared is negative 1. one. Yeah, so it's negative 1. I can go through. I'm not going to go and explain it. I uh, hope in Algebra 2 you got to explain to you. If you don't understand it, come and see me. I'll be more than happy to explain it. But yes, i, we talked about our imaginary unit. i is negative 1. And here, look at here I am explaining it. Um, i squared, though, just remember it's just going to equal negative 1. If you basically square both sides, you get i squared and then the Square root of negative 1 squared is just negative 1, right? We're not going to get to i cubed, so let's not worry about it. OK. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus a negative 1. Yes? 
Everybody agree with me? Now, I can just combine minus and negative is like adding that to 5. So I could say x squared minus 4x plus 5. Cool. Now, I can do this multiplication. You can multiply this out, or you should be able to do it in your head, hopefully. So that becomes x squared. That's going to be minus x minus 12. Does everybody agree with me? No? OK, then you get it factored out. Now, to finalize this problem, you have a trinomial times a trinomial, which is not fun at all. You could do distributive property. But if I do distributive property, you're probably going to get sick of how many lines I'm going to draw. So I always just like to use the box method. If I have a trinomial, I do three columns, and I do three rows. And I simply just write x squared minus x minus 12 x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now we simply just go ahead and multiply. Here is the height for all this whole row. And I just multiply that by each different width. So in doing that, I get x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 12x squared. Huh? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's a minus, right? Thank you. Yeah, I wrote that in wrong. Everything else is good, right? OK. 4x squared, and then this becomes a positive. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That becomes a positive 4x squared. This becomes a um, negative 24, 48. So that becomes a positive 48x. Then over here, this is 5x squared minus 5x. And then that's going to be minus 60. But what's nice about this is, one, you're just doing length times width to find the area of each box. And then also, you guys can see that the diagonals are like terms. So when you're combining them, writing your final answer, you can just you can add them, but you can also add in what the diagonals are. So the final answer for this problem, f of x equals x to the fourth. This gives you plus 3x cubed. My x squared is going to be 9, so that's going to be negative 3x squared. Then that becomes a positive 48, so that's going to be a positive 43x minus 60. No, what? Dang it. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Any other mistakes, or is that good?